Good afternoon, graduates. Good afternoon, guests. Can I please ask everybody to take your seats? We're going to begin very shortly. Thank you. Thank you. 
introduce our national anthem singer, who is a Gabelli School of Business alumnus, Mina Grice, earned his MBA from Fordham in 2013 and is the founder of Grice Holdings, a New Jersey-based company that offers a range of services for commercial and residential building projects. Mina once placed among the top 100 finalists on American Idol. And today, we have the honor of him singing for us. Please join me in welcoming Mina, and please remain standing for the national anthem and the invocation. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light What so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming Whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, see, does that star spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the O oh, source of knowledge and truth, fountain of understanding and compassion, lavish upon these graduates your most precious gifts of insight and human sensitivity. Help them to keep high in their minds the ethical standards they learned here. Let them remember your, let them remember your biblical injunction that we do not live by bread alone. We invoke the ancient Hebrew prayer, most appropriate at this moment, this moment of thanksgiving and joy. Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam, Shehechianu, Vikiyamanu, Vihigianu Lazman Hazer. We give thanks to you, O God, ruler of us all, for keeping us alive, sustaining us, and enabling us to celebrate this day. Amen. You may be seated. Good afternoon. My name is Donna Rapicioli, and I have the privilege of serving as the Dean of the Gabelli School of Business. I'd like to welcome our speaker, alumnus Manny Sharico, members of the Board of Trustees, the Reverend Joseph M. McShane, Dr. Friedman, and our colleagues in the University Administration, faculty and staff, the family, 
friends, and Fordham alumni, as well as those of us watching via live stream. And most of all, I'd like to welcome our phenomenal MBA and MS graduates. Congratulations to all of you on your wonderful achievement. As we celebrate your graduation from Fordham, I'd like you to think about what got you here today. Support from family and friends, academic excellence, of course, courage to take a risk to learn something new, and maybe even leave a home far, far away. Teamwork, yes. But I would argue that something else brought you to this point. Why do I think so? Because at some point in your graduate program, I'm sure things got really challenging, but you didn't quit. Research has shown there's a particular personality trait that allows you to hang in there no matter what. It's called grit. Let me tell you a quick story about grit. How many of you have seen the TV show Mad Men? Well, if you have, I'm sure you're familiar with the main character, Don Draper, and the man who plays him, John Hamm. You probably think of Hamm as a very successful actor, a central role in an acclaimed TV show, and a Golden Globe Award as well. The interesting thing is that the beginning of John Hamm's story wouldn't have foretold this outcome. After graduating from the University of Missouri, Hamm wanted to act, he was picked up by the prestigious William Morris Agency, but his track record there was not at all prestigious. He went on audition after audition, and in three years, he was cast exactly zero times. Ham set a deadline for himself to quit, thinking maybe he needed to be realistic. But he also decided to keep trying until the deadline came. And keeping at it worked wonders. He eventually got hired by NBC and was on his way to international fame. John Grit, John Ham had grit. So what exactly is grit? There's actually a psychology professor at the University of Pennsylvania, Angela Duckworth, who developed a stream of research on grit. In one of her earlier jobs, Duckworth had been a public school math teacher. In her classroom, she watched some students struggle and others triumph. She wanted to know when someone has the same intelligence and the same ability, why do some people rise to the occasion while others fall back? Duckworth had a hypothesis. The difference between the high achieving students and the low achieving ones was grit. She conducted research to capture exactly what grit was and she came to define it as perseverance and passion for long-term goals. In her own words, grit entails working strenuously toward challenges, maintaining effort and interest over years, despite failure, adversity, and plateaus in progress. The gritty individual approaches achievement as a marathon. Frankly, can you think of anything that feels more like a marathon than business school? It's the perfect time to demonstrate grit, and you have. Many of you received Dean's List recognition for your outstanding GPAs. Four of you won second place in the 2017 University Trading Challenge. You organized a Women in Business Conference on Entrepreneurial Thinking. You continued the Finance Society tradition of thought-provoking panel discussions. You sponsored a Cultural Diversity Night and a FinTech Networking Session. Based on all this and more, I have no doubt that you have what it takes to persevere. You have what it takes to impress everyone around you. You certainly have impressed us. I commend you for your accomplishments. No matter what the world may throw at you, no matter how complicated the project, no matter how annoying your teammate might be, your excellence, drive, and grit will see you through. You can change the world, and we expect nothing less. Congratulations on all of your achievements to date, and I know the best is yet to come.
It is now my honor to introduce the president of Fordham University, the Reverend Joseph M. McShane of the Society of Jesus. Thank you very much, uh, Dean Rapicioli. Before I begin, I, I have to observe that Saturday seems to have returned to New York. All the rain. Mr. McGinnis, Dr. Friedman, Dean Rapicioli, Mr. Chirico, members of the Board of Trustees, faculty, staff, and administration, families of our graduates, and members of the magnificent class of 2018. It's a great honor to welcome you to this celebration of all the achievements of our graduates. But before I address the graduates directly, I would like to steal a few moments to acknowledge a few people. First, I'd like to thank Mr. Chirico for accepting our invitation to deliver the keynote address at our ceremony this afternoon. As you will discover when you hear him speak, he is an extraordinary person and a true ram. A son of the Bronx, he is widely recognized in the business world as a man of both integrity and talent. Therefore, it is no surprise that in 2016, Corporate Responsibility Magazine bestowed a responsible CEO of the Year Lifetime Achievement Award on him, and that he was named a Father of the Year this year by the National Father's Day Council. I would also like to shine a spotlight on our faculty. They've gone the extra mile with all of our graduates. As teachers and as mentors, they've shared their research, insights, and wisdom with our graduates. But most important of all, in all that they have written, taught, and done, they have shown our graduates how to be honest, effective, and creative citizens in the world of business. Therefore, both the graduates and the whole university owe them a debt of gratitude, a debt that I am happy to acknowledge right now, and I would ask you to join me in acknowledging all that they have done. Please stand, faculty. Finally, I'd like to thank the families of our graduates for all they did to bring the graduates to this moment. They have been and are our graduates' greatest fans and most generous benefactors. They have surrounded them with care and support at every turn. Therefore, although they will not receive Fordham diplomas at this ceremony, I have to tell you that I believe that this is a day of triumph for them as well as for the graduates. Therefore, my friends, please accept my thanks and the congratulations of the entire university family. And so, at long last, I come to the graduates. As I look out at you, I have to tell you that I admire you and both wonder at you and worry about you. As for my admiration, well, the reasons for that are clear. You're smart, hardworking, creative, and you've covered yourselves with glory in the course of your time in our midst. As for my wonders and worries about you, the reasons for them require a little teasing out. To tell you the truth, my worries are really derived from the business environment that you will face as soon as this ceremony ends. Not to put too fine a point on it, you'll be entering a world that is character characterized by more than its share of disruptive innovation with an emphasis on the adjective disruptive and the breathlessly accel accelerating rate of change. The rise of tech companies that have outsized profiles that allow them to move the market on a dime. Rapid changes in the operation of com energy companies. The challenges of global warming, the tenuous state of old line industrial companies like GE, the seesawing of the fortunes of the banking industry, the continued instability in the Middle East, the meteoric rise of China, the dawn of the age of a post-Brexit European Union, the cultural polarization of our own country, the rise of new protectionism both at home and abroad with tariff wars in the offing, and international debates on immigration and nationalism have all roiled the world economy. If that were not, not enough, closer to home, we've seen a wholesale change in the world of retail commerce. Amazon has made it easy for all of us to shop online. This has, of course, wreaked havoc on malls, on local commerce, and brick-and-mortar retail of every kind. Disruptive innovation. 
disruptive innovation. Since you are faced with all of this, I have to say once again that I admire your courage and your sense of purpose, but that I am both filled with wonder at your resolve and worried about what living with uncertainty and constant change can and possibly will do to you. You, of course, you have not been deterred by all of these challenges and changes. Far from it. Courageous and savvy, you have pursued your business studies in this fraught context with discipline and with a great sense of purpose. You have, moreover, done this in the heart of the city that unabashedly calls itself the capital of the world, a place where the forces at work in the world are felt with especially great force and great immediacy. Since you are such hard chargers and such restless thinkers, you have not been content to suffer the effects of the forces that have swirled around you and around the world of business. Rather, you have examined and wrestled with the forces that have shaped a new world coming to birth across the globe and have analyzed the impacts and trajectories of those forces. And now, informed by your studies, you are prepared to enter and engage a new business environment, an environment in which you know with certainty that the pace of change will only accelerate in the course of your career, or more honestly, your careers. That means, of course, that you will most, almost certainly change your careers in a serial fashion as the world changes around you and demands that you adapt. The new and evolving world that you are entering will require agility, even a bit of broken field running. Agility, however, is not the same thing as running after fads. You will have to be discerning in everything that you do. In order to discern, you will need mastery, vision, and above all, character. These are the resources that you will need to navigate the waters and headwinds that you will encounter in the coming years. Mastery, you learned it here. In point of fact, we will declare that you are masters of business administration. Vision, vision is an art that you will have to develop and nurture through the development of a lifelong habit of learning. Therefore, be voracious readers. Be wide-ranging in your reading. Be critical consumers of information, of data, and of opinion. As for character, as for character, my friends, as you and I both know, character is hard to describe, but it is easy to recognize in and through actions, behavior, and the art of decision making. Character is also the unique strength and the unique contribution that all great leaders give to the world and to the worlds that they inhabit. It is also, as the setting in which our ceremony is being held this afternoon, the Vincent Lombardi Center makes clear, a trait that Fordham has been devoted to developing for 176 years. Therefore, my friends, please understand that character, strength of character, character is the unique gift that you can and should bring to all that you do in your careers and in your lives. Character counts. Character binds organizations together with a sense of honor and a sense of purpose. Character inspires. Character invites trust. Character redeems the world. Therefore, my friends, on this your graduation day and ever after, focus on becoming recognized men and women of character. But how? Imitate those who are hailed for the strength of their character. Like them. Treat others with reverence and respect, especially the people who report to you. Don't be known as someone who only reports up well, but doesn't treat others below with respect and reverence. Character is seen in the way in which you deal with those who report to you. Be humble enough to listen to others. Be brave enough to allow your lives to be guided and informed by principles every day. Attend to the needs of your hearts 
and the needs of your souls and make prayerful reflection a part of all you do. And if you do all of this, you will be and become acknowledged to be a men and women of character, men and women who can lead with conviction and thus do a changing world, a world of good. In other words, if you do all of this, if you live your life with a focus on, with your eyes set on the goal of becoming men and women, women of character, you'll be true men and women of Fordham. Fordham, the Jesuit university of the capital of a changing world, a world that longs for meaning, vision, grace, and character. Congratulations. Each year, we ask our graduating MBA and MS students which faculty members had the greatest impact on their learning and institution of the Gabani School of Business. Students vote on three awards. I would like to briefly recognize the faculty winners. The Dean's Award for Faculty Excellence is given to an exceptional adjunct faculty member. The winner is Joseph Zerpolo. The Gladys Henry Crown Award for Faculty Excellence is given to a full-time faculty member for exceptional performance and devotion to the school's ideals. This year's winner is Danielle Higgins Green. <clears throat> the third faculty honor, the Stanley Fuchs Award is presented in memory of a former era chair of law and ethics who was a devoted teacher and student advocate. This award is given to Megan Drew Grogan and Aditya Saharia. <laughs> Congratulations to our faculty winners. Reverend Father President, I now invite you, Trustee Stephen McGinnis, Manny Chirico, Megan Drury Grogan, Associate Professor of Communications and Media Management, to come forward. After years of leadership, by Emmanuel Manny Chirico. PVH Corporation has become one of the largest apparel companies in the world, but it also leads the way in socially responsible practices. In keeping with Mr. Chirico's commitment to making a positive impact on the communities in which the company operates. Mr. Chirico graduated from the Gabelli School of Business in 1979 and worked at Ernst & Young for 14 years before moving to Phillips Van Heusen, later renamed PVH Corporation. As chairman and CEO, Mr. Chirico engineered the acquisition of iconic brand companies, including Tommy Hilfinger and Calvin Klein and led PVH's transformation into a youth-oriented global company. He has strived to promote fair labor conditions throughout the company's supply chain, and also helped to step up PVH's partnership with Save the Children and its efforts to promote early childhood education and job training in developing countries. His many accolades include a Lifetime Achievement Award from Corporate Responsible Responsibility Magazine. For his passionate, lifelong commitment to creating opportunity and justice for all people, 
for his strength of character and for his devotion in bringing that commitment to the Fordham community. We, the President and Trustees of Fordham University, in solemn convocation assembled, and in accord with the chartered authority bestowed upon us by the Regents of the University of the State of New York, declare Manny Chirico, Doctor of Humane Letters Honoris Causa, and that he may enjoy all the rights and privileges of this, our highest honor. We have issued these letters patent under our hand and under the corporate seal of the University on this, the 19th day of May, in the year of our Lord, 2018. It gives us great pleasure to welcome our distinguished guest speaker, honorary degree recipient, and Fordham alum, Emmanuel Manny Chirico. I want to thank Father McShane, Dean Rapachola, Dr. Friedman for this great honor. And I want to congratulate the, the graduates of the Gavelli School of Business, class of 2018. Well done. When Dean Rapicioli reached out to me to tell me that I was selected to receive this honorary degree, I was blown away. How cool is this? What a great honor. And then she told me I would have to give a speech to the graduating class, and I got a little queasy. I told the dean, you know, I make a lot of presentations to Wall Street and the business community, and I do a lot of interviews on TV discussing the fashion and retail and apparel industries, but I really don't do speeches. Donna just said, don't worry about it. You'll be great. So I happily accepted. That was back in December. And of course, what's the first thing you do? You tell everybody about it. You tell your friends and family that you're receiving an honorary degree from your alma mater and that you're going to address the graduates and everyone is really impressed. That's the fun part of this whole experience. The hard part is actually figuring out what to say. If you are like me, and I think most Fordham graduates, the best way to deal with this problem is to put it off for as long as possible. So next thing I know, it's May 1st, and I'm in full panic mode. So I sent the dean an email. Hi, Donna. How's it going? I'm really looking forward to the diploma cer ceremony. Are there any guidelines or suggestions for the speech? And in very professorial fashion, here is what I get. Three bullet points. Number one, your speech should be 13 to 15 minutes. 15 minutes is perfect. I could do that. Number two, talk about yourself. Your experiences at Fordham and in your career. Okay, I could do that too. And finally, number three. Be inspiring and give some great career advice. Well, like the song by Meatloaf says, two out of three ain't bad. And graduates, if you don't know who Meatloaf is, ask your parents. So as I thought about it, talking about myself was a pretty good idea. Not because I'm such a fascinating person or a great role model, but because 39 years ago, Almost to the day, I was you. And today is all about you. Forty years ago, Fordham was a different place than it is today. Fordham was a commuter school. Eighty percent of the student body lived at home, 
and commuted to school. And almost everyone that commuted to school came somehow from the Bronx. They either lived in the Bronx or they went to high school in the Bronx. College life at Fordham back in those ancient days was more like high school, but with a lot more free time and freedom. The one thing at Fordham that is the same today as it was 40 years ago is the Jesuits. The, the Jesuits are an unusual group of people. One, they are very smart. Two, they know they are very smart. And three, they make sure you know that they are very smart. No, they demonstrate this intelligence by quoting some obscure author or historical figure whenever you have a conversation with them, no matter what the topic is. The really smart Jesuits, like Father McShane, give you the quote in Latin first before they translate it back to you in English. That was Fordham 40 years ago. So let's go back in time. It's September 1978, my senior year at Fordham. It's the first week of classes, and I'm taking a philo philosophy course with an older Jesuit priest who has a reputation for being an easy grader. So of course, the class is filled with seniors. Uh, with about 10 minutes to go in the first class, he dismisses the class and asks the seniors to stay. He talks about how important our senior year is. He said, it is important that we use this time to prepare to take our place in the real world after graduation. He closed his comments with a quote from St. Ignatian, go forth and set the world on fire. I really like that quote. It was cool. Sounded like something Bill Parcells would say to the Giants right before they went out to play the Super Bowl 21. I had no idea what the quote meant, but I wrote it down in my notebook anyway. Then I raised my hand and I asked the old priest, Father, what does this quote, go forth and set the world on fire, really mean? And in typically frustrating Jesuit fashion, he said to me, young man, that's what you need to figure out. That same day, the business school was having a meeting of all the accounting majors preparing for us for our on-campus interviews with the big eight accounting firms, which today has now been reduced to the big four accounting firms. We were in Keating Hall, and I was in my usual seat in the last row of the auditorium. A partner from Price Waterhouse gave a talk about the importance of a career plan. Like all accountants, he was detailed and laid out for us all the questions. What are your goals? What do you want from life? What do you want to accomplish in your careers? And how much money do you want to make? It was a good talk, and if you think about it, we put together all sorts of plans for everything we do in life. But I would argue, most of us don't put a plan for our lives together. Think about it. You start a new business, the first thing you do is put together a business plan. You get a big group project in your finance, finance 101 class, you put together a group plan to complete it. You decide to coach your granddaughter's sixth grade basketball team, you put together a plan for practice and your game strategy. But when it comes to your life and your career, too many of us just left, let life happen to us, making decisions only when we are confronted with them. That is no way to be successful. Not having a plan to guide you through life's challenges leaves you rudderless and adrift in a sea of chaos. That was not going to happen to me. So I went to work on my plan. My top priority was to get a job and make a lot of money. Look, it was the 1980s, and we all wanted to get out of our parents' homes and get our own ap apartments. And in order to do that, you needed money. So my first life plan was very detailed, financially driven, 
totally career-oriented, and centrally focused on me. But at least it was a plan. I also decided my plan needed a cool title. And of course, I sold my title from that old Jesuit. Go forth and set the world on fire. So life lesson number one for you today is make sure you have a plan for your life and your career, and make sure you've got a cool title to go with it. About three months later, in early January of my senior year, I ran into the first problem with my plan. It was during Christmas break, and I met this girl. Now, this girl is beautiful, smart. She's the whole package. And this girl actually thinks I'm special. There's just one problem. With There's no mention of this girl in any of my plans. The timing was all off. She was eight years early. I wasn't supposed to fall in love until I was 30, but fall in love I did. And six months later, I asked that girl to marry me. And a little over a year after that, we were walking down the aisle. Best decision I ever made in my life, but it wasn't part of my plan. You can't control every aspect of li your life, and you can't plan for everything. But in life, you need to seize these opportunities when they come along. Just like I did 38 years ago when I married the beautiful lady that is sitting today in the first row behind the students. Hi, baby. <laughs> so life lesson number two, make sure you have a flexible plan so you're able to take advantage of the amazing opportunities that will come your way. Once I started working, about two years after graduation, I recognized another shortcoming with my life plan. When you sit down and you write your plan and lay out your goals, nobody writes, I will fail on Tuesday and screw up on Friday. But I did fail in my career, and I did screw up in my personal life. Everyone makes mistakes. Everyone screws up. Everyone fails. It is part of life. The key is, how do you respond to your failures and your mistakes? Do you take ownership and responsibilities for your screw-ups? Do you bounce back when you fail? As Vice President Biden said, failure at some point in your life is inevitable, but giving up is unforgivable. The other thing you're going to realize at some point in your life is that life is not fair and you are not in control. For me, that lesson hit home when I was 39 years old. Life was really good. I was happily married with three great sons. My career was flying. I was the CFO of a Fortune 500 public company, and I was making a lot of money. I was on plan. It was all good until I was hit with a lightning bolt from out of nowhere. I was diagnosed with lymphatic cancer and my life changed in a heartbeat. Life can be hard and unfair, but you need to be resilient. You need to bounce back. As that great Fordham alumnus Vince Lombardi once said, it doesn't matter how many times you're knocked down, but how many times you get up. So life lesson number three that I share with you today is life is hard, you will screw up, you will fail, and you will fall. The only thing you have to remember is keep getting up. I was fortunate and blessed. I was cured of my cancer, but when, but when you're confronted with your own mortality, it changes you. It changed me. It made me more grateful, and it humbled me. It made me recognize that my life needed to be about more than just my career and my financial success. So over the next few years, I looked at my life and I was a little disappointed with myself. I looked at what I accomplished and what I was striving to achieve and it was all about me. It was all about wanting more and getting more. I wasn't happy with myself and I didn't like where my life was headed. 
Whenever, whenever I'm dealing with a life challenge or problem, I go to church. Besides just going to Mass, I visit church often. It's the only time I could hear that inner voice, that voice of God. I'm not sure you know this, but God has a Bronx accent, just like me. When I talk with God, we talk Bronx. Anyway, it's 2004. I'm sitting in St. Patrick's Cathedral in Manhattan. I'm surrounded by people, but I feel I'm all alone. I'm down, a little confused, and I'm not happy with my life. And I'm asking myself, what do I want from life? And in my mind, I hear this voice, this voice of God with the Bronx accent. You're asking the wrong friggin' question. And listen, I clean this up. God didn't say freaking. He dropped the F-bomb on me. So life lesson number four, when you're, going through, when you're going through life and having problems, try talking to God, but make sure you're asking him the right friggin' questions. So there I am in St. Patrick's Cathedral. It's 2004, 25 years since my graduation, and it seems I've been asking myself the wrong friggin' question. How can that possibly be? Okay, so I asked, what's the right question? And it hit me right between the eyes. The question is not, what do I want from life? The question you need to ask yourself is, what is life asking of me? What is life demanding of me? So there I am, in the cathedral, waiting for the answer to the question. What is life asking of me? And there's complete silence. The voice is still. It's quiet. But the answer to the question comes to me the second I asked it. It was the same answer that the old Jesuit priest gave me back in my senior year at Fordham. Young man, that's what you have to figure out. So that is my challenge to you, Gabelli graduates, class of 2018. Go figure what life is demanding of you. What is life asking from you? And go forth and set the world on fire. Thank you, congratulations, and God bless you and your family. Thank you, Manny, for your wise words and for being here with us today. I'm sure our graduates will remember your remarks long into their careers and during their lives. Before we begin the presentation of diplomas, I would like to recognize our MBA and MS students who were elected to honor societies, named to the Dean's List, or won special awards. Would all of those students please stand for a round of applause? Thank you. Now, it is with great excitement that we begin the most anticipated event, the awarding of diplomas. Members of our class of 2018 have completed the requirements for a wide range of programs. Three curricula within the MBA, three dual degrees, and 11 Master of Science programs. It is our tradition to award degrees by program, as each program has its unique curriculum and requirements. Four of our Fordham colleagues will announce the names of our graduates. Kathleen Kennan, Lonnie Cusin, Sarah Wu, and Jennifer Voss. Father McShane and Dean Rapicholi, you have the pleasure of bestowing the diplomas. I'd like to ask you all in the audience to please hold your applause until the last student receives a diploma.
The candidates for the Master of Business Administration degree in the cohort program are John Vincent Airy II, John Berkowitz, Kofi Boachi, Kelly Campbell, Joseph Catania, receiving the degree from his father, Vito Catania, Fordham Prep 1969, Fordham College at Rose Hill 1973, and Gabelli School Business MBA 1977, and his mother, Christine Catania, Fordham College at Rose Hill 1975. Jeremy Cohen, Joseph Clandria, Kelly Davis, Matthew Flores, Jeffrey Gray, George Lacher, Janice Lamb, Robert Lee, Pauline Lima, Luli Lin, Akshay Malhotra, Madeline McDonough, Michael McAvoy, Sarah McMahon, James Miranda, Kateki Prashant Ogalay, Hollis Schwanz, Amanda Sylvia Ng, Connor Topper, Adam Vanden Bogard, John Voistock IV, Kyle Walsh, Shu Wang, Wanjiao Wang, Jay Wiener, Pang Yang, Samuel Yu. The candidates for the Master of Business Administration degree in the professional program are Robert Abruze, Kelly Allegra, Kelly Amable, receiving the degree from her sister Rose Amable, Fordham College at Rose Hill, 2004. Mark Annunziato, Mariel Arroyo, Brittany Batten, Walter Carlson, Thomas Casserly, Catherine Castellano, Adrian Castillo, Nadish Cesar, Lana Chen, Henry de Blasi, receiving the degree from his father, Henry de Blasi, Fordham College at Roseville, 1982. E. Justin Dotsman, Patrick Fury, Paul Giordano Jr., Svetlana Golden, Philip Jung, John Keane, Matthew Kozik, Alice Lamb, Ryan McGinney, Kara McGonigal, receiving the degree from her father, Michael McGonigal, Gabelli School of Business, Bachelor of Science, 1982, and MBA, 1988. Megan Mooney, Annalise Morales, Andrew Murphy, Quinn Nguyen, Joseph Plantamoli, Megan Powers, receiving the degree from her father, Jonathan Powers, Fordham College at Rose Hill, 1980, and Gabelli School of Business, MBA, 1982. Donald Puglisi, James Reed, Lisa Rosenberg, Caitlin Sabatino, Sunpreet Singh, Joseph Sparaccio, Amy Uduana, Non Wong, Tatiana Wojcik, Amanda Wright, Alexandra Yonker. The candidates for Executive Master of Business Administration are Aisha Ahmad, Jeffrey Balka, Karthi Bhatt, Peter Brown, Catherine Cardenas, Krisha Cardoso, 
Angel Cardoza Jr. Anthony Sakay. Elizabeth Christopher. Camissa Cochran Pert. Patrick Colonane. Miguel De La Cruz. Wasim Dean. James DeVerry. Jennifer Dixon. Mark Douglas. Ali El Mahdi Abdallah. Richardo Francis. Daniel Gomez. Jeff Goodman. Dean Gordon. Sandra Guerra. Patrick Guerrier. Nathan Hess. Janae Howard. Marco Kostovich. Sapun Katari. Erica LaSala, receiving the degree from her father, Thomas LaSala, Fordham College at Rose Hill, 1975, and Fordham School of Law, 1978. Francisco Lugo, receiving the degree from his sister, Tara Harris, Fordham College at Rose Hill, 1991. Ridwan Mahmoud, Robert Martinez, Sujith Matthew, Ruben Mendez, receiving the degree from his daughter, Elizabeth Mendez, School of Professional and Continuing Studies, 2017. Kadeem Mitchell, Sirui Mushegian, Mirlinda Naziri, Edison Ortega, James Palmer, Kaladhar Pulupati, Shannon Quinn, receiving the degree from her husband, Tom Quinn, Fordham College at Rose Hill, 2010. Roy Ragusa, Andrew Rogowitz, Karina Rustia, Lady Bibiana Solis, Lydia Solis, Brandon Stanford, Joyce Tyrell, receiving a degree from her husband, Dexter Tyrell, Graduate School of Arts and Sciences, 2017. Latoya Wong, Richard Wiles, the candidates for the Dual Juris Doctor and Master of Business Administration degree are Kajan Pompey, Benjamin Shannis. The candidate for the Dual Master of Business Administration and Master of Science and in Information Systems degree is Joshua Clyburn. The candidates for the Dual Master of Business Administration and Master of Science and Taxation degree are Bowen Jiang. Yi Bingqing Jiang, Kawir Zhao, Ryuen Zhu. The candidates for Masters of Science in Accounting are Salim Ali, Anqi Bian, Anna Bunia Afaro, Yu Jia Chen. Shuo Chen, Lauren Chu, Shai Yi Cui, Xiao Dai, Nan Deng, Juan Du, Christina Fiala, receiving the degree from her aunt Andriana DeSanto, Fordham College at Rose Hill, 1994. Hao Qing Feng, Tianjiao Fu, Yunya Gao, Zhuojun Gao, Eric Gerber, Ting Gong, Jia Ying Guo, Xin Chen Guo, Elena Hamilton, 
Alexandra Harbert, Kunning Hu, Ya Xuan Hu, Xiao Tian Jiang, Yu Zhe Jiang, Hong Yi Jin, Krista Kilgan, Alice Low, Aaron Lee, Han Li, Jingfu Li, Jingyan Li, Jingyang Li, Junyi Li, Lue Tao Li, Na Li, Pei Ling Li, Peng Li, Xiu Lin Li, Yixin Li, Yu Fan Li, Li Hui Lian, Zhang Liberto, He Yixiao Liu, Jia Bin Liu, Qi Yu Liu, Yi Yang Liu, Yu Xiao Liu, Zi Hao Liu, Fan Lu, Yi Chen Lu, Ting Ting Luo, Yan Rui Liu, Qin Yi Ma, Xi Xi Ma, Zi Hong Ma, Caitlin McQuaw, Yue Mo, Yi Pan, Hai Xin Peng, Xiao Di Qin, Luan Yao Jun Shan, Fang Bing Shen, Jia Yu Shen, Xiang Yi Shen, Yang Shi, Xiao Yi Si, Xiao Yi Song, Yu Song, Daniel Stoy, receiving the degree from his father, Adrian Stoy, Fordham School of Law, 2016, and his mother, Margot Stoy, Gabali School of Business, Master of Science, 2016. Ji Sui, Tian Shu Sui, Lan Qi Sun, Ling Ling Sun, Xiao Chun Sun, Fu Sha Tu, Zi Ling Wan, Ji Ning Wang, Shu Jia Wang, Xiao Min Wang, Xin Tian Wang, Yan Qi Wang, Ying Hui Wang, Yong Liang Wang, Yue Wang, Kun Zhe Wang, Chun Xia Wu, Qun Huan Wu, Yuan Mei Wu, Yue Wu, Yi Han Xia, Yu Fei Xia, Jia Wei Xiao, Yu Hui Xie, Bai Lu Xu, Can Xu, Yu Jing Xu, Jing Bo Yan, Meng Ning Yang, Xiao Yang, Xin Yang, Ying Jie Yang, Evan Yanulis, Ning Ning Yong, Rui Wen Yao, Dong Zhe 
于会员、金元、委员、演员春桐、张、陆一、张、西东、张。西彤、张、寻、张、一池、张、一伟、张、子都、张、雨晴、赵、家园、郑、雷、郑、新超、周、于。周、君雅、朱。The candidates for Master of Science in Applied Statistics and Decision Making are Cheng Cheng Cai, Jia Hua Gu, Shi Meng Lin, Ying Ling Chu, Zuo Zhou Ran, Miguel. Shaw, Diana Situ, Xiaoyu Wang, Yi Yi Wang, Wen Zhang, Yi Yun Zhao, Yu Zheng. The candidates for Master of Science in Business Analytics are Chuan Zi Cai. Yi Cai, Yi Ting Cai, Evan De Castros, Chuan Jian Deng, Luo Qi Deng, Michael Frisha, Jie He, Jin Chen Hou, Bing Yang Hu, Qi Ya Hu. Long Huang, Jian Jin, Nakul Kaura, Li Li, Song Yue Li, Su Rui Liang, Jia Hao Liu, Yi Luo, Francisco Gabriel Mendoza, Yan Ling Peng. Minglu Sun, Xu Zhi Wen, Kenneth Wu, Jin Jin Xiao, Hui Zhen Xu, Qi Zhang, Yong Dong Zhang. Zheng Chi Zhang, Dai Zhen Zheng, Wei Zhou, Zi Yun Zhou, Di Zhu, Qian Xia Zhu. The candidates for Master of Science in Global Finance are Bei Lun Chen, Ruo Xin Cheng, Shui Tong Chi, Wei Jia Deng. Shui Jiao Feng, Fang Fei Gao, Jue Gong, Gautam Govadi, Chiu Yun Hou, Hao Hu, Ting Ting Huang, Yue Kun Huang, Meng Yu Jiang, Shu Ran Jiang, Zi Xu Jiang, Feng Yi Jin, Varun Kana, Hao Ran Li, Pei Qin Li, Shan Yuan Li, Yang Li, Lian Hao Lin, An Heng Liu, Le Ting Liu, 
新新闻流，悉尼流。Eduardo Lopez， 波温鲁鲁，加扬马，汉月毛 ，Massimiliano Mirachi。Christopher Oster, Siju Pan, Parishart Panishpun, Sayam Patel, Yu Ting Peng, Zheng Qi, Xian Qiao, Kai Yi Qu, Naveen Ravishankar, Yue Rong. Jingbo Si, Hao Yue Sun, Alexander Suslov, Yao Kan Tang, Yi Fan Tang, Zi Jian Ti, Meng Ting Tian, Christian Valdez. Adisya Venkateswaran Hari Hari Krishnan, Ruo Tong Rui Tong Wang, Si Qi Wang, Wei Xuan Wang, Wen Zhe Wang, Yi Mei Wang, Jia Min Wu, Jun Hao Wu, Yi Lun Xia, Ruo Wei Xiao. Ming Rui Xie, Wan Ting Xie, Yang Xu, Zeng Kang Xu, Bai Xiu Yan, Tian Qi Yan, An Qi Yang, Mao Yang, Wen Xuan Yang, Zhen Yang, Zi Ming Yang, Heng Zhen You, Si Yi Yu, Yu Qing Yue, Ling Rui Zhang, Lu Dan Zhang, Hao Jian Zheng, Ke Xin Zheng, The candidates for a Master of Science in Information Systems are Shua Cheng, receiving the degree from his wife, Zichio Yang, Gabelli School of Business, MBA, 2017. Roshuin Gong, Weilin Li, Ijia Sun, Zhuche Wang, Kefin Yu, Mubai Zhang, Xin Zhao. The candidates for Master of Science Investor Relations are Camilla Crawford, Allison Lushu, receiving the degree from her uncle, Dennis Ahern, Fordham College at Rose Hill, 1967. Lauren Lulick, Jing Meng, Vincent Shrestha, Receiving the degree from his brother, Elson Strasta, Gabelli School of Business, MBA, 2013. Samantha Tacone, Jacqueline Taylor, Lucio Wong, Robert Woods III, Shua Fong Zhang. The candidates for Master of Science and Management are Kelvin Alcantara, Samantha DeGrange, Yifan Feng, Yiyun Gu, Yu Hui Guo, Tenglin Jiang, Ninsen Zhong, Jinza Li, Tong Li, Li Gong Liang, Ronggu Liang, Xianda Liang, Xiaojun Liu, Divya Lachmi Munbad, Selik Aslik, 
Shun Sheng, Abhijit Singh, Tian Tan, Xiang Tan, Haoxiao Wong, Xian Yi Wang, Xiao Wu Wang, Yu Ying Wang, Zhao Hui Wu, Zare Yang, Chi Kong Ye, Di Yu. The candidates for Master of Science in Marketing Intelligence are Erica Artis, Feng Rui Bai, Aline Bowens, Sharon Tao, Alexandra Carlin, Duenan Chen, Shu Qi Chen, Yan Ye Chen, Yi Yan Chen, Chi Chao Chuang, Punit Gangarde, Yue Gu, Jin Wen He, Jia Qi Jia, Wan Jin Jia, Hannah Cunningham, Vera Clayman, Ke Xin Li, Mian Li, Si Cheng Li, Kai Jie Liao, Jie Lin, Jia Yun Liu, Bai Jun Long, Jin Luo, Xiao Yue Lu, Andrew Mandela, Trent Mongis, receiving the degree from his father, Jonathan O'Haran, Gabelli School of Business, MBA, 1988. Michael Peters, Hong Yu Qin, Lauren Quentz, Bianca Regan, Chen Chen Shen, Yi Ming Song, Yi Tang, Lilia Tawil, Peter von Ulmer, Amber von Hunecker, Michael Verhoeven, Bebe Wang, Bing Chen Wang, Hao Jie Wang, Hui Ya Wang, Ke Han Wang, Lin Wang, Yan Qi Wang, Yun Hua Wang, Hao Tian Wu, Mu Rong Xi, Rui Xie, Qin Zi Xu, Si Di Xu, Fei Yan, Chu Jun Yang, Fan Yang, Yi Yang, Min Yin, Sui Han You, Tan Yu, Rui Yi Yu, Xi Bei Yu, Yue Zhan, Mu Zhang, Wei Zhang, Zhao An Zheng, An Qi Zhu, Meng Jie Zhu, Xiao Jie Zhu, Ge Zhi Zhuang. The candidates for Master of Science in Media Management are Christian Artis, Shen Tei, Barnes, Araba Brown, Brian Hart, Yang Hu, Jing Mu Liu, Nampu Milalo Michali, Stephanie Silva, Yuan Yuan Yang, Shu Zhang. 
文倩张、小韩张、雨熙张、博洋赵。The candidates for Master of Science in Quantitative Finance are Jun Shuo Bai, Yu Tong Chen, Zheng Fang, Yi Xuan Gong, Yang Hong. Ao Xiang Jian, Yang Jun Liao, Jia Yuan Liu, Xun Liu, Wen Yao Luo, Meng Yang Miao, Jia Min Pei, Karen Panjambi, Chen Qiu. 华杰师、金怡孙、惠莹王、家军王、兰王、宁王、乐言、齐音、Kirill z a h a r o v 陆章、硕南章、乔丹佐。The candidates for Math of Science in Taxation are Amy Bacon, Brianna Beans, Michael Bennis, Madison Capel. Tong Wu Han, Yongbo Hu, Vanessa Juman, Vicky Low, Laura Mastro Piaggio, Anthony Mazzala, receiving the degree from his wife Joanna Mazzala, Graduate School of Arts and Science, 2013. Brandon. McNulty, receiving the degree from his father Robert McNulty, Gabaldi School of Business, Bachelor of Science, 1984. Catherine Mitchell, Christopher Morrow, Tong Wen, Michael Rowe, Eric Squirrel, Yang Su, Hu Zhang Thomas. Jerry Joe, we will now announce additional graduates receiving a master's degree in a business discipline. Li Wei, Yi Lun Wang, Zi Yi Lin. Peng Zheng Hu, Shun Zhang, Xiao Yu Tang, Chen Ye Yao, Yi Tan Liu, Yin Xue Li, Xiao Di Zhao. Yu Xin Jiang, Zi Yang Wan, Will Zhang, Liana Scott, Charles Ngoi. I'm going to ask all the graduates just to stand so that we can recognize them one more time. Congratulations! <laughs> graduates, please be seated for one moment. 
I want to leave you with a thought or two. In your time here as a student, whether it was one year or five years, you really became a part of the Fordham family. As you move on from the university, treat us like you would treat your own family. Keep in touch. Please stay connected. Join us for alumni events. If you have a meeting at Columbus Circle, stop by. Volunteer to share with our new students what you've learned about getting a job. And in the future, when you're building teams at work, think about where there might be a place for a Fordham graduate. And most importantly, as Father McShane always says, visit us often and stay long. Our ceremony is almost complete. Once it is ended, we invite you to join us for some celebratory refreshments in the McGinley Center. I'll ask that you remain seated until our faculty and guests have fully left the room. Before we begin the closing procession, I would like to ask Father Michael C. McCarthy of the Society of Jesus to come forward to give the benediction. I would invite us to bow our heads and pray. Go forth into the world in peace. Be of good courage. Go forth into the world in peace and be of good courage. Hold fast to that which is good. Render to no one evil for evil but go forth into the world in peace. Strengthen the faint-hearted, support the weak, help the afflicted, honor all persons. Love and serve the Lord or your highest principles, rejoicing in the power of the spirit of truth and good. And may the blessing of God or of those you love be upon you and remain with you always. Amen.